Hi, I'm Jan Muller from Philly of the Food Saver Company. You've probably seen me demonstrating the Food Saver on TV. Now in this video, I'll be showing you how to operate your Food Saver. I'll be demonstrating how to vacuum package in Food Saver bags, as well as other vacuum storage containers. Now you may not have all of the accessories that I'm going to show you, but I want you to be aware of all the food storage options available with your Food Saver. And any of the accessories I'll be showing you can be ordered by calling the toll-free number on your screen or visiting our website at www.foodsaver.com. During this video, you'll see how the Food Saver removes the air that's the major cause of food spoilage, so your foods will stay fresh and without freezer burn three to five times longer. And with the Food Saver, you'll not only save your food, but you'll save time and money. And always remember that vacuum packaging is not a substitute for refrigeration. Perishable foods, or those that say refrigerate after opening, will still need to be refrigerated after they've been vacuum packaged. But they'll stay fresh tasting three to five times longer than if you hadn't vacuum packaged them. Now, let's take a look at some of the features of your food saver. Before we get started, I have a couple of important suggestions. First, I recommend that you read your food saver user manual. You'll find that it has lots of practical information. And it's particularly important that you read the section about food preparation and storage so you'll know how to safely handle and store your food. Your food saver also comes with a handy quick start guide. Now, throughout this demonstration, I'll have the food saver VAC 1050 facing away from me. That makes it easier for you to see how it works. But when you do this at home, you want to have the food saver VAC 1050 facing towards you. I'd like to start by pointing out some of the important features of the VAC 1050. Underneath the food saver, you'll find a handy storage compartment for the electrical cord. By the way, it's never a good idea to use an extension cord with your food saver because it may diminish its power. This is the lid of the food saver. The lid needs to be locked into position whenever you're vacuum packaging. There are two locks, one on each side of the food saver. To lock the lid, you need to press down on the lid while you pull the locks forward. There are stars on the lid to show you where to press. So use your thumbs to press down on the stars. While you're pressing down on the lid, pull the locks forward until you hear them click into place. See how I'm doing it? The lid will unlock automatically during the vacuum process. But if you ever mistakenly lock the lid, to unlock it, all you have to do is press down on the stars and the locks will release. Under the lid, you'll see the sealing strip. It's a strip of Teflon that runs across the food saver. The sealing strip heats up and seals the food saver bag. It's important to give the sealing strip time to cool down after each use. So after using your food saver, always wait 20 seconds for it to cool down before using it again. And this is the sealing time switch. It lets you control how long the sealing process lasts. It can be set for three seconds or five seconds. Set it at three seconds for normal vacuum packaging. Set it at five seconds when you're vacuum packaging foods with a high moisture content like meat. This is the vacuum channel. It's a trough surrounded by a rubber gasket. When you want to remove the air from a food saver bag, you need to put the open end of the bag down into this vacuum channel. This is the on button. Just press and release this button and the Food Saver VAC 1050 will automatically vacuum and seal. These are the sealing lights. The green lights will turn on in sequence during the vacuum packaging cycle. The last light is red and indicates when the VAC 1050 is sealing. This is the manual seal button. It's used only with Food Saver bags. When you want to interrupt the vacuum processing cycle and start sealing a bag before all the air has been removed. This is the vacuum hose port. Now you won't use it when you're vacuum packaging food saver bags, but I'll show you how to use it when you're vacuum packaging other food saver accessories. The most common accessories you'll use with your food saver are the specially designed food saver bags. These are not like any other bag on the market. These bags have patented air channels that remove the air quickly. Plus, the bags are three-ply with a reinforced outer nylon layer to make sure that once the air is removed, it stays out. The Food Saver bags come in two sizes, quart size 
and gallon size. I'm going to use the quart size bag and a block of cheese to demonstrate how to vacuum package in a food saver bag. It's important that the food fits into the bag with about three inches to spare at the end so that there's enough room to vacuum and seal the bag. It's easy to do. All you do is lift up the lid of your food saver and place the open end of the bag down into the vacuum channel. So just curve it down into the vacuum channel. Make sure the bag lies smoothly across the sealing strip. You want to make sure that there's no wrinkles or creases in the bag. Now it doesn't matter which side of the bag is up. You can have this side of the bag up or the clear side of the bag up. Just make sure that the edge of the bag goes down into the vacuum channel. Lower the lid and now we're going to lock the lid in place. Just press down with your thumbs where the stars are on the lid and at the same time pull the locks forward. Now all we have to do is start the machine. Press the on button and release. It automatically engages the pump, it pulls out the air, and it automatically seals it. When it's finished sealing, your Food Saver VAC 1050 shuts off automatically. That fast, we have vacuum sealed the cheese. Now remember that these bags are reusable over and over again. So when you want to use the cheese, don't cut the bag down here. Cut it right below the seal that you just made. That way you only throw away one inch of the bag material. In addition to ready-made food saver bags, you can also make your own custom-sized bag using rolls of food saver bag material. These rolls come in two widths, 8 inches wide or 11 inches wide. To make a bag, all you need to do is to cut the roll to the desired length and seal one of the open ends. Let me show you how to do it. I'll be demonstrating with this large block of cheese I bought from a warehouse club store. I'm going to use the 11 inch wide roll. All you have to do is just lay out the roll on your kitchen counter so that it's longer than the product that you're going to vacuum pack. Now I'm going to get into the bag two or three times, so I'm going to make the bag a little bit longer than the normal three inches that you want on the end of the bag. So I'm going to cut it right down here. Now if you look right here on the edge of the bag, you can see there's some indicating black marks. That is your guide to be able to cut straight across the bag. Just use the other marks on the other end of the bag so that you can get a nice straight cut. Now we have an open-ended piece of bag material. You've got open on both ends, so you have to seal one end first. This is how you seal one end of the bag. Lift the lid, and you want to place the edge of the bag on the sealing strip. Don't put the bag all the way into the vacuum channel or lay it on the rubber gasket. It won't work. So make sure that you just have the edge of the bag right on the sealing strip up against the rubber gasket, just like that. All you have to do is just lower it and lock the lid in place. Press down with your thumbs on the stars while pulling the locks forward. To turn it on, just press the on button and release. It will automatically seal the end of the bag. That fast, we have sealed one end of the bag. Now, if you didn't make your line straight all the way across, you wouldn't be able to do this. So just straighten out the cut so that you can seal it straight across the bag. Now, to finish vacuum packing, we'll take the cheese, place it inside our custom-sized bag, and vacuum pack. Lift the lid, curve the edge of the bag down into the vacuum channel. Now, if this is curled up like this and you can't get it down into the channel, just turn the bag over. Now you can see how that curls up, so I'm going to do it this way. So that way you've got the edge of the open bag down into the vacuum channel. Make sure there's no wrinkles across here so that we have a very good vacuum seal. Lower the lid, press down on the stars, pull the locks forward, and start the machine. The VAC 1050 is designed with one touch operation. Once you start it, you let go of the on button. It activates the pump, and it starts to pull the air out of the bag. Once all the air is evacuated, it will automatically take the green indicator lights over to red 
and that tells you that it's sealing. As soon as it's finished sealing, it shuts off automatically, and we vacuum packed our cheese. Now, let me show you once more how to do that. When you want to get back into the cheese, remember, cut right below the seal. That way you save your bag material. It's reusable over and over again. So all you're doing is you're throwing away one inch of the bag material. Take out the cheese, cut off whatever portion you want to use, and then re-vacuum pack it. A great feature of the Food Saver Vac 1050 is the manual seal button. If you press this button while the air is being removed from a Food Saver bag, the vacuum process will stop and the sealing process will start. So this is a handy button to use if you're vacuum packaging items such as bread and baked goods that you don't want to get crushed. When the Vac 1050 has removed as much air as you want, press the manual seal button. The vacuum pump will stop and the sealing process will start. Let me show you how to do this. I'll demonstrate with this Bundt cake that I'm going to put into a gallon sized food saver bag. Now you can leave the cake, donuts, pastries, whatever you want to, on a plate. That way every time you want to serve it or cut yourself a piece like I've done here, it's ready to serve. All you have to do is to lay the edge of the open bag down into the vacuum channel. Just curve it down into the vacuum channel. Make sure there's no wrinkles across the sealing strip. Close the lid. Press down on the stars and pull the locks forward. Now we've locked the lid in place. Just turn the machine on and then press the manual seal button to manual seal it. That fast, we've sealed the bag, but we haven't taken out all the air. Since we didn't remove all of the air, we didn't crush the cake inside the bag. But since we removed a lot of the air, it will keep it fresher longer. And what if you don't want to remove any of the air at all? You just want to seal a bag. Well, your food saver can do that too. Of course, you won't be removing the air, so you won't get any of the benefits of vacuum storage, but maybe you just want to seal a bag of potato chips you plan to finish eating tomorrow. Or you may want to seal an item in a food saver bag to prevent it from leaking in your luggage while you're traveling. Here's what you do to seal a bag without removing the air. Essentially, you'll be doing the same thing you just did when you made a custom-sized bag. I'll demonstrate this with a bag of potato chips. Open the lid, lay the edge of the cut bag right on the sealing strip. Don't put it into the vacuum channel or on the rubber gasket because it won't work that way. Just lay it right on the sealing strip, just like that. Close the lid, lock it in place, press down, pull the locks forward. Activate the seal by just pressing the on button and releasing. It automatically will seal the bag. Isn't that great? You can only do this with food saver bags or with strong mylar type bags like this potato chip bag. Others may melt or burn with the heat from the sealing strip. I'd like to share a couple of tips with you about food saver bags and rolls. Once you've made a bag, it's always a good idea to check the seal. This is what a good seal looks like. It's smooth and even all the way across. As you can see, there's no wrinkles or creases in that seal, and that means that it's going to hold the vacuum. If you ever notice that your seal looks like this with a wrinkle in it, it means your bag wasn't lying smoothly over the sealing strip. This small wrinkle will eventually allow air to re-enter. If this happens, it's easy to fix. Simply cut the bag below the seal and re-vacuum package the bag. If you find it difficult to get the bag to lie smoothly over the sealing strip, you may not be leaving enough room between your food item and the end of the bag. Make sure there's at least three inches of space at the end of the bag. You should also make sure that the inside of your bag near the seal is free from grease and water. You can see the grease that got on the bag when I put the cheese inside. You see, grease and water will prevent the bag from sealing correctly. So it's a good idea to wipe the inside of the bag with a paper towel. You want to remove the grease, oil, or water, or any particles that can be where you're going to make a seal. And before you start vacuum packaging. Here's another tip. If you're vacuum packaging meats or fish that have a lot of liquid in them, fold a paper towel 
and place it between the food and where you're going to make your seal. This will absorb the moisture and prevent the liquids from being sucked into the vacuum pump. Let me show you what I mean. I've got a couple of steaks here that I want to vacuum pack, so I've placed my paper towel inside the bag, far enough down into the bag so it's not going to interfere with the vacuum channel or the sealing strip. Now all I have to do is just vacuum and seal. Here's the secret to vacuum packaging liquids. You can't vacuum package liquids in food saver bags and rolls because the liquid could get sucked into the vacuum pump. But you can freeze the liquids first, then vacuum package them. For example, you can freeze soups and stews in a plastic container or a loaf pan so they freeze into a block. Then remove the frozen block from the container and vacuum package it in a food saver bag. Next time you're too busy to cook, just drop the frozen block into a pot of boiling water to heat and you'll have hot, fresh tasting homemade soup or stew in no time. You can also freeze liquids in ice cube trays. Then transfer the frozen cubes to a food saver bag, vacuum package and store the bag in your freezer. This is a great way to make ice packs for your cooler or to store small servings of homemade broth for making soups, gravies and sauces. And if you'll be vacuum packaging any items that have sharp edges that could puncture the food saver bags like this silverware, wrap the items in a cushioning material like a folded paper towel before vacuum packaging them. Now just vacuum and seal. And here's a tip for soft fruits and berries that are easily crushable. Spread them out on a baking sheet. You can slice them first if you want and then freeze them for about one to two hours till they're just hard. Then vacuum package them and store them in the freezer. That way they won't get crushed in the bag and they won't all clump together when frozen. So later on you can open up the food saver bag, take out just the amount of fruit you need. Maybe just enough for a fruit pie or a fruit salad or a frozen fruit drink. And then re-vacuum package what's left in the bag for another day. And when you're vacuum packaging vegetables, they should always be blanched first in boiling water or in the microwave and then stored in the freezer. Look at the great color of these vegetables. That's because they were blanched. You'll find instructions on blanching in the food preparation section of your user manual. You see, blanching is important whenever you're freezing fresh vegetables because it stops the enzyme action that causes vegetables to lose their flavor, color, and texture. And if you want to vacuum package vegetables that are easily crushable, you can pre-freeze them the same way you do for soft fruits. But make sure you blanch them first before you freeze them on a baking sheet. That way you'll be able to store the vegetables in meal-sized portions that will be fresh tasting even when they're out of season. And when you're ready to thaw your frozen food, your frozen fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, poultry, or any other frozen vacuum packaged foods, always thaw them in the refrigerator. Remember that food saver bags can be washed and reused as long as you haven't previously used them to store raw meat, fish, or poultry, use them to store greasy foods, or boiled food in the bag. Now let's take a look at other food saver vacuum accessories. You should have received a vacuum hose with your food saver. This will allow you to use some of the great food saver vacuum accessories. I'm going to show you some accessories that I'm sure you're going to love. The food saver vacuum canisters. These canisters come in three styles. Designer canisters, bulk storage canisters, and the square canister. They're all specially designed to be strong enough for vacuum packaging. Now you'll probably use the food saver bags mostly for foods you store in the freezer, but you'll find the food saver vacuum canisters really handy for storing foods in the refrigerator or pantry, or even on your kitchen countertop. And of course they're perfect for those delicate items that could be crushed if they were vacuum packaged in a food saver bag. They're things like strawberries or even chips and crackers. And because you're removing the air from the canisters, you can use them to keep dry foods dry and crunchy or to keep moist foods moist. First, I'll show you how to use the Food Saver Designer Canisters. These canisters are sold in sets. There's a two-piece set, and there's also a three-piece set. The designer canisters look good on your countertop, so you can use them to store baking supplies or dry goods, and they're great for storing delicate items like strawberries or lettuce in the refrigerator. I'll demonstrate how to use them by vacuum packaging these fresh strawberries. First, make sure you only fill the canister up to one inch from the lid. 
So whether you're using something like strawberries or you're doing soup or tuna salad, fill it up to one inch from the lid. That gives you enough room to be able to pull a good vacuum. Make sure that you always have this rim clean. You want to wipe it off so that there's no residue on it. And also check the gasket here to make sure that it's clean and there's no residue on it. And just place the top on the canister. Now we're going to attach the vacuum hose to the machine. Here's the vacuum port. Take the nozzle, press down firmly and snugly, give it a little quarter turn so that it's in there snugly. And take the other end of the nozzle, put it right here in the hole that's on top of the canister lid. Now before you can vacuum, you have to lock the lid in place just like you do when you're making a bag. So press down at the stars with your thumbs, pull the locks forward that locks the lid in place. Now we can vacuum pack it. Just turn it on by pressing and releasing. The machine will automatically vacuum out the air just like we vacuumed out of the bag. As soon as all the air is out of the canister, it will automatically shut off so you don't have to worry about it. Remove the vacuum hose from the canister and the machine, especially if you're going to be doing food saver bags. And that's really vacuum packed. It's on. So that means when you store it in the refrigerator, it will last three to five times longer. The Food Saver bulk storage canisters come in four sizes that are perfect for storing large quantities of food. They're great for storing all those foods that are cheaper to buy in bulk but they go stale quickly. Things like cereal and cookies, crackers, chips and pretzels. So they're great for people who live in areas with high humidity. Because of their size, you'll probably want to use the bulk storage canisters for your dry goods that you store in the pantry. But they can also be used to store perishable items in the refrigerator. I'll demonstrate how to use the bulk storage canisters by vacuum packaging these cookies. Now, all you have to do is fill it up to with one inch of the top. So whether you're putting dry goods like cookies or you're doing something like a soup or stew, fill it right up to within one inch of the top. Then make sure that you have no residue on the rim or on the rubber gasket of the lid. Make sure it's dry and clean. Place the lid on top. And you can see that I have the gray arrow on the white knob pointed to the arrow right below the word vacuum. Because we're going to vacuum out the air, make sure that this arrow is always pointed to this arrow. Attach the vacuum hose to your machine right here at the vacuum port. Attach the other over here. Make sure you press down snugly. Give it a little turn so that you've got a really good snug fit. Now, before you can vacuum out the air, you have to remember to lock the lid closed, just as if you were doing a bag. So just press down on the stars with your thumbs. Pull those locks forward. Now we can take out the air. Turn on the machine and release. It starts to pump out the air the same way we pump the air out of a bag. You don't have to worry about when all the air is out of the canister. The machine will automatically shut off when the job is done. Remove the vacuum hose. Make sure you remove it from the machine too, especially if you're going to do food saver bags. Now to finish this, all we have to do is turn the knob from vacuum to closed. Vacuum pack. You store that in the pantry, it'll stay fresher longer. If it was perishable foods, like fruits or vegetables, soups or stews, tuna fish salad, make sure you store it in the refrigerator if it's perishable. When you're ready to open it, all you have to do is turn the knob from closed, past the word vacuum, to open. Now listen. Releases the vacuum. That allows you to remove the lid. Now bulk storage canisters can be stored in the pantry or the refrigerator. The bases can be washed in the dishwasher, but the top should always be hand washed. Don't immerse them in water, just wipe them with a clean, damp cloth. The square canister is designed specially to be the right size for marinating. Although you can marinate in any food saver canister, the square canister, because of its shape, needs less marinade. With the food saver, the good thing is that you don't have to remember to marinate everything the night before. Vacuum action allows the pores of the food, your meat, fish, or poultry, to open up, and it lets the marinade in. So instead of having to marinate overnight, you can marinate in 20 minutes. I'll demonstrate how to use the square canister by marinating these pork chops in a teriyaki marinade. Remember, first of all, to only fill it up to within one inch of the top of the canister. Make sure that you always clean the rubber gasket in the lid and the rim 
around the canister. You don't want any teriyaki sauce here because it won't give you a good vacuum seal. Place the lid on top. Now, if you look right here on the white knob, you see this arrow? It's pointed to the word vacuum, right where the arrow is below the word. So since we're going to vacuum out the air, every time you're ready to vacuum pack using the canister, have this arrow pointed to the word vacuum. Now we'll attach the vacuum hose to the machine. Take one end of the hose and this nozzle, press down firmly and snugly, give it a little quarter turn, make sure it's snug fit. Do the same thing here with the little hole that's in the, the top of the knob of the canister lid. Now before you can vacuum pack the canister, you have to lock the lid closed, just as if you were doing a bag. To do that, press down where the stars are with your thumbs and pull the locks forward. Now you've locked the lid. To start the machine, just press and release the on button. It will automatically begin to vacuum out the air from the canister. Now you don't have to be concerned about when is all the air out of the canister. The machine will automatically shut off when it's done vacuuming out the air. Remove the vacuum hose. Also from the food saver machine, especially if you're going to be doing food saver bags. Now to finish the process with the canister, you want to turn the white knob from vacuum to close, and that's vacuum packed. Then just put your square canister in the refrigerator for 20 minutes to marinate. To open the square canister, turn the knob from close, pass the word vacuum to open. Listen. open it up. That releases the vacuum so you can remove the lid. Now the square canister can be stored in the pantry if you're going to do some dry rice or dried beans or in the refrigerator if you were doing something like tuna fish salad or chicken salad or a casserole. The base of the square canister but not the lid can be placed in the microwave for reheating food but never use the base to cook food. The base can be washed in the dishwasher but the top should always be hand washed. Don't immerse the top in water, just wipe it clean with a damp cloth. Here are some good tips for using the Food Saver vacuum canisters. When you're vacuum packaging powdery foods like flour or even coffee grounds, cut a piece of paper towel the size of the canister and place it on top of the food before vacuum packaging it. This will prevent the powder granules from being sucked into the vacuum hose. You can even vacuum package foods like soups stews and homemade sauces in the Food Saver vacuum canisters, store them in the refrigerator where that smells great and they'll taste fresh longer. Just remember that you shouldn't vacuum the liquids when they're still hot because they could bubble over. Let them cool in the refrigerator first before vacuum packaging. And remember, whenever you're vacuum packaging in a canister, you need to leave at least one inch of space at the top of the canister. Here's another great accessory, Food Saver Vacuum Bottle Stoppers. They allow you to vacuum package liquids in their original bottles, and they're great for things like expensive oils that go rancid very quickly, usually before you've even used half of the bottle. Or you can use them to vacuum package wine. Did you ever open a bottle of wine and store the other half later? Well, now you can vacuum package it, and you won't lose any of that great taste or wonderful bouquet. Let me show you how to use the vacuum bottle stoppers. First of all, you want to make sure that the top of the wine is clean from any wine or residue. That'll give you a great vacuum seal. Take your bottle stopper and fit it down into the neck. Make sure it's a tight fit. If it's loose, it may leak air. Then all you have to do is attach your vacuum hose to your food saver. Take one end of the hose, press it down into the vacuum port, give it a nice, firm, snug twist so it's tight. Press it right here into the hole on top of the bottle stopper. Now we want to take out the air that's in the bottle. To do this, you have to make sure that the lid is locked in place, just as if you were doing a bag. So press down on the stars and pull the locks forward. That locks the lid in place. To start the machine, press the on switch. It automatically pulls the air out of the bottle. As soon as all the air is out, it'll shut off. That easy. Remove the hose and from the machine, especially if you're going to do food saver bags. Now you can store your wine in the refrigerator or the pantry for up to about two weeks. It'll keep it fresher longer. To remove the Food Saver bottle stopper, simply twist and pull up on the bottle stopper to release the vacuum. Listen. Vacuum packed. 
you won't want to use the vacuum bottle stoppers with carbonated or sparkling beverages. Here's why. You see, the food saver will remove the air, and that's what gives them their fizz. They'll become flat. And don't use the food saver bottle stoppers with plastic bottles. They're not strong enough for vacuum packaging. To clean the food saver vacuum bottle stoppers, just hand wash them. Here's a handy accessory that will let you vacuum package foods in their original jars. Food saver universal lids. They're great for retaining the freshness of foods in their original containers, like pasta sauce or chocolate sauce, or even a jar of nuts. In fact, anything in a jar that needs to be refrigerated after opening. They come in two sizes, a five and a half inch diameter and a four inch diameter. Now, why are they called universal lids? Because they're designed to fit a variety of different sized jars and cans. You can use them on any strong glass jar that has an opening smaller than the size of the universal lid. In fact, they can even be used on coffee cans because coffee cans are strong enough to withstand the force of a vacuum. So how do they work? Well, foods sold in stores that are in jars and cans have had all the air removed so that they'll stay fresh longer. As soon as you open the original container, you let the air in. Now your food will start to deteriorate. So if you use only a small portion of what's in the jar or can and then replace the original lid, you're actually locking in the air that's causing your food to go bad. So throw away the original lid and replace it with a Food Saver Universal Lid. Now you can vacuum package what's in your original jar and preserve the fresh taste. Let me show you how. I'm going to be using a 4-inch Universal Lid to vacuum package this jar of peanuts. The first thing to remember is to always make sure that the rim of the jar or can is clean from any residue. You also want to make sure that the Universal Lid rubber gasket is clean. Now just place the universal lid on top of the jar. Now attach the vacuum hose. Take one end of the hose and put it into the vacuum port on your machine. Press down and turn so that it fits snugly. Do the same thing to the hole on the white knob on your universal lid. That way you'll get a good vacuum seal. Now before you can vacuum out the air from this jar or can, you have to lock the lid on your food saver, just like you were vacuum packing a bag. Press down on the stars with your thumbs, pull the locks forward. Now we just start the machine. Press on and release. Now if you notice that the machine is not vacuuming out the air, all you have to do is just press down gently and you'll hear the pump start to pull the air out of the jar or can. Now you don't have to worry about whether it's getting all the air out. Once the air is out, the machine shuts off automatically. Just remove the hose from the lid and from your machine, especially if you're going to do food saver bags. Now, to complete the process, turn the arrow from the word vacuum to the word close. That's vacuum packed. Now you can store this in the pantry. It'll stay fresher longer. Remember, though, if it's a perishable item like pasta sauce, make sure that you store this in the refrigerator. To open the food saver universal lid, just turn the knob from the word closed past the word vacuum to the word open. Listen. Hear it release the vacuum? That releases the lid so you can get to what's inside the jar or the can. Now, Food Saver Universal Lids work best on containers with a diameter greater than two inches. Otherwise, the universal lid can easily be knocked off, even though it's been vacuum packaged. So handle with care and don't ever lift the jar by grabbing the universal lid. And if you want to use the universal lids with cans, and don't plan on using the food within a day or two, other than coffee, transfer the food to a Food Saver vacuum canister. That way you'll prevent the off flavor that cans transfer to food. Food Saver Universal Lids should be hand washed using a mild dishwashing soap and warm water. Dry thoroughly before reusing. Another accessory is the Food Saver Jar Sealer. If you want to vacuum package in mason jars, you'll need to use a jar sealer. Mason jars are readily available at supermarkets and hardware stores, or you may already have mason jars in your home. They're perfect for pantry staples like rice, beans, flour, or brown sugar, or for your homemade gifts of candy or cookies. The Food Saver jar sealers come in two sizes, wide mouth and regular. 
The wide mouth jar sealer is used to vacuum package wide mouth mason jars, and the regular jar sealer is used with regular mason jars. Let me show you how you can use a food saver jar sealer to vacuum package in mason jars. I'm going to demonstrate with brown sugar, because vacuum packaging is a wonderful way to keep brown sugar moist. I have a wide mouth mason jar, so I'll be using the wide mouth jar sealer. Now, the first thing to remember is to always make sure that the rim of the jar is clean and only fill the jar up to about one inch from the top. Also, make sure that your lid is also clean on the inside. Now, you need a mason jar and a dome lid that's a flat metal mason jar lid, like this one. You won't need the screw band section of the mason jar lid when you're vacuum packaging. Before you start, you need to soften the rubber underneath this metal lid. To do this, bring a pot of water to boil and then turn off the heat. Insert the lids and let them soak for about 5 to 10 minutes. You'll find these instructions in your user manual. Also, make sure the metal lid of the mason jar is flat and not warped. Bent in any way. Can you see the difference? See how that's bent right there? that won't work. Now all you have to do is just place this lid on top of the jar, take your jar sealer and place it down firmly so that it's seated all the way around on the top of the jar. Connect your vacuum hose to your machine, take the one nozzle, put it into the vacuum port, press down and give it a little quarter turn so it fits snugly. Put the other end of the hose into the jar sealer. Now before you can vacuum out the jar, you have to lock the lid in place just as if you were going to vacuum pack a bag. To do that, you press down where the stars are with your thumbs, pull the locks forward. Now, it's simple. Just start by pressing the on button. The machine will automatically vacuum out the air from the mason jar. When all the air is out, it will shut off. Remove the hose from the jar lid and also from the food saver, especially if you're going to do food saver bags. Now gently remove the jar sealer and you have a vacuum packed mason jar. So you can tell that it's vacuum packed because you can't pull the jar lid off. Now to remove the mason jar lid, just take the spoon and wedge it between the rim of the glass and the lid. Can you see that right there? Then just twist up. Listen. So you can do that gently, and that means you'll be able to use this lid over and over again. But before reusing the lid, always check that it's still perfectly flat. If it's even slightly warped or bent, you won't be able to get vacuum in the mason jar. Now to avoid accidents, never use a knife to remove the mason jar lid. And don't use a bottle opener because it'll bend the lid, you won't be able to reuse that lid again. Now to clean your food saver jar sealers. Just hand wash them using a mild dishwashing soap and warm water. Dry them thoroughly before reusing. Now don't be confused. You can vacuum package in mason jars with your food saver, but you cannot use a food saver for canning. See, vacuum packaging is not the same thing as canning. Although it removes the air, vacuum packaging doesn't heat foods. So perishable foods that have been vacuum packaged still need to be put in the refrigerator or freezer. By now, I'm sure you can't wait to start vacuum packaging. I recommend that you always keep your food saver on your countertop. That way it'll be ready for you to use every day. Of course, there wasn't enough time in this video to show you all the food saver vacuum packaging accessories. But in the box with your food saver, you'll find a catalog of all the accessories available. And you can order any of the food saver accessories by calling the toll-free number on your screen or visiting our website at foodsaver.com. I hope you enjoy vacuum packaging with your food saver.